Hi friends, this video shows the management of a shining, a mature and intumescent cataract which is uh, quite commonly seen in our Indian scenario. So I start the case by making a side port, uh, staining the capsule with tripen blue dye and injecting a high viscosity OVD through it. And uh, then I create a very small nick in the center of the anterior capsule to allow the fluid to escape. This reduces the intralenticular pressure and also reduces the risk of uh, rexis runoff. However, you still have to be very careful and uh, what I like to do is to make a primary rexis first which is of a smaller size. I usually aim at a size of about 4.5 uh, millimeters or so. At this point, it is important to make sure that the anterior capsule is always flattened uh, using the cohesive viscoelastic. If you are able to complete the rexes in one go, uh, well and good. However, sometimes you may have to enter through the main port and use a rexis forceps to uh, complete the CCC as shown in this case. So you can always use the rexis forceps uh, through either the main port or the side port depending upon the ease of accessibility. The rexis is now complete and uh, make sure that you don't do too much of a hydro. Usually these mature intubacent cataracts do not require much of a hydro dissection. For phaco emulsification, direct chopping techniques are preferred over trenching techniques such as the stop and chop and divide and conquer uh, techniques. These are known to cause more stress on the zonules and would also lead to higher consumption of the ultrasound phaco energy which could potentially lead to damage of the endothelium and delayed visual recovery due to post-operative edema. Now when you are separating the fragment, it is okay to stay a little superficial. Just hold the fragment with the phaco probe using a slightly higher vacuum setting and place your chopper slightly deeper into the groove and then use it to separate the fragment very gently without causing much of a lateral separation. As the zonules in these mature and intumescent cataracts tend to be weaker compared to the routine ones and using excessive lateral forces can lead to intraoperative zonular dialysis uh, which could complicate the case. Now since this nucleus is on the denser side, I am again injecting OVD for endothelial protection and uh, followed by this, the remaining fragments are uh, easily emulsified. For the irrigation and aspiration, I generally use a coaxial cannula. However, in these cases where the rexis is on the smaller side, I generally like to use a bimanual IA system as the cortical cleanup can be performed more thoroughly using this. Once this is done, now the intraocular lens can be implanted into the capsular bag. However, this is not the end of the case. You need to perform a secondary rexis to enlarge the size of the CCC to prevent post-operative capsular phimosis which can lead to late uh, tilt or decentration of the IOL. This can be done from the side port using a microcapsular forceps as shown. Finally, the OVD is evacuated from the anterior chamber and this brings us to the end of this case. Thank you for watching.